comments on this route or anything? Or, I mean, obviously, we want to update this people's phone numbers change, mailing addresses. Bob Pentland tried to send me something, and it didn't go to my physical address. So. Yes, uh, just, just uh, it, please do. And uh, if you are willing to include a photo or have a photo taken of you sometime <coughs> at church to be included in it, uh, you know, either get a photo to me or yank on me and say, take my photo on the day you'd like it to be taken. I will say a photo is not necessary. No, it's not. You're not getting one from me. <laughs> but uh, to be totally honest, the photo is helpful when you have new people coming into the church and they're trying to associate a name sure. with a face. So that's all. Yep. No, no, I'm include a picture if at all possible. And, uh, we, we saw this, we talked about this, I guess Tina mentioned it Thursday evening we had music practice and I said, I don't know if you want to put these in the offering. Yes, the instructions on the form says fold it and place it in the offering. Place. I said not in lieu of an offering. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. <laughs> um, also, you'll notice in your bulletin, um, the pastor has included a, uh, a sheet with blanks. This is the outline of the sermon. And there are pens that have been placed. Kate thought that was a great idea for the kids. Um, there's a pen in the, you know, in your pocket in front of you so you can follow along and fill this out. Correct? Okay. Um, there will be a adult Bible study in the library immediately after the service. Tomorrow is our, is the food pantry. It is, however, uh, I think because of the weather coming in, uh, we're going to switch it to Wednesday morning. Do you work with think you you're going to Wednesday? or you're going to? We are moving it to Wednesday morning. Do it Wednesday morning instead. So no food covered tomorrow? No, no, it'll be Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. And the same time, it'll be volunteers at 8.30 on Wednesday, yep. and uh, doors open for the public at 10. Wednesday evening, Zoom Bible study from Led from Florida. <laughs> we have to hear about that every week. Now, um, Thursday evening, we've switched. If you're able to make it, those that are involved in the music, it's 6 30. Uh, Thursday evening, right here. Friday at 7 30 is still Bible study at this point in time, right? Yes. Uh, any other announcements? We have a birthday, at least one. Any other announcements that weren't included in the bulletin? We had a nice time last Sunday afternoon at Cummings for celebrating Gary turning 40. Ah, 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 ah. I'm getting wishes. Uh, we do have a birthday. Uh, David, for you. Um, I don't know if an email's gone out, but uh, we need to have a budget meeting. Yeah prior to Christmas, and it may be the week of the 12th, not okay. this week, but the following, the, an email should be going out to the parties this week. Okay, uh, one other thing, um, we will be having, it's been discussed around, I guess the decision has been made, we will be having a Christmas Eve service for those that can attend. It's going to be 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. So it's earlier, because I know, like Herb, it's got family issues, and I know Devin Kate, they have, and John, um, and children uh, have other issues. So, you know, if you can attend, fine, if you can, but we're going to have it on 3 o'clock Christmas Eve, because Sunday is Christmas Eve. So, Sabrina just turned, what? I don't ask. <laughs> but her birthday is the 7th, so. Happy birthday.
Sunday in Advent, and as tradition, we'll be lighting the Advent candles. I've been asked, I've asked Brandon David to do the first reading of the Advent candles. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the houses of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, and at the time, I will cause righteousness, branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Amen. Turn our hymnals to number 243, Emmanuel. We'll go, we'll sing it twice through. So let's stand and sing together. 243.
for the privilege to be able to serve you by giving. Lord, I pray that you help us to be cheerful givers whenever we are given the opportunity to give to you, whether it be money or time or resources. Lord, I pray that you help us to have the right attitude to be the living sacrifices that you want us to be. Lord, I pray that you help us to grow our, our love. Lord, please I pray help us to love you more, to love others more. Lord, I pray that you help us to honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Let's turn our hymnals to number 583. You are my all in all. And as the elders come forward in preparation of communion.
someone else that we've not dealt with, then we shouldn't partake. Because it says in the passage that, that there were some people in Corinth who, who were sick and some even who had died because they were taking it in an unworthy manner. So God wants us to take this seriously. And so that's, that's just a good reminder for all of us that this isn't just something like, oh, it's communion, it's just something we do once, once a month. But this is a special time set aside <coughs> to thank God for what he's done for us. So, we have body first. David, if you could please pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we partake of this symbol of the broken, your body which is broken for us, you, know, you tell us that you are the bread of life. You know, if we put our faith and trust in you, Lord, we have salvation. And we can never be worthy on our own of the great sacrifice that you made for us. Help us to do this in remembrance of you and to do it in all due seriousness that you intended this celebration to portray. We thank you for the blessings that you give each and every one of us, Lord. And, and one of our greatest blessings is the freedom in this country to come into your house and worship, glorify and praise you this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Paul said, as he's repeating what happened, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup. Eternity in your ways. 
We thank you once again for thy Son, Jesus Christ, who is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, and Redeemer. same way also we took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord in heaven, Lord, I thank you for... for the great sacrifice and the great gift that you've given us, the gift of salvation. Lord, I thank you for giving us this, this, giving us the Lord's effort to observe so that we do not forget what you've done for us. Lord, I pray that you help us to not forget just how big of a gift, just how big of a sacrifice this was for you and how unworthy we are of it. Lord, I pray that you help us to remember to cherish this gift and Lord, please help us to to live in such a way that honors and glorifies you. I thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
good thing that I, of course it is closer to Christmas and pretty much everybody likes Christmas hymns, so no surprise. Well, we certainly have some people to keep praying for, keep praying for, for, for Peter. We're really glad that, that you're here, that you feel well enough to be here. So keep praying that his neck heals well and quickly, correctly. Keep praying for, for Barbara and pray for pray for those of us who have to suffer. Pray for yeah, pray for those of us who have to suffer in Florida. You know, must be terrible. Um, pray for them. Yeah, they they're complaining on Wednesday that that it was cold. Yeah. Because it was raining, like, yeah, sure, seventy and damn, okay. That's cold. Um, yeah. But also pray for Bob and Barbara in New Jersey. Pray for them. Pray that they have that they're safe. All of them stay safe. Uh, and keep praying for Travis Pelletier and Rachel Christie as they're in in Umaine. As I'm sure we all know, Umaine is not exactly friendly to Christianity. So keep praying for them. Give them encouragement. Pray that they're able to get good guests in that can speak to the students, and that God will work in the hearts of those students. Any other prayer requests? Israel. Yes, Israel. I, I keep thinking about that every time. I finish every time. That should have to happen. But yes, definitely want to keep praying. And did they get the hostage, hostages back? They broke a group of right in season. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't get them all back. Yeah. But they were able to get some. Oh, good. I'm um, glad they were able to get some of them, but we definitely want to keep praying for, for those, those who are there. We also want to be praying for our brothers and sisters, fellow Christians who live in Gaza. Pray that they'll be safe and that they'll be bright lights to those around them during this hard time. So, I'm sure it's hard for the civilians not having any water or power. So hopefully this will be a time when people can come to know Christ. So, yes? Um, for for if I, and I spoke to the first guy who week and she said she tested positive with COVID that morning. Oh, okay. I have no extent, so... Okay. Yeah, well, that's the one we prayed for her. So. Yes. We um, had a friend pass away this week. Um, he was prayed for some of us um, earlier in the week. His name was Gerald Keel, and he was a friend of ours through our friends in the Navy. So if we could pray for his family. And then um, Kate has also added to the prayer list out here two young people whose families I'm friends with. And they're both two-year-olds, and they both have leukemia. Mm. So if we could please pray for them. Olivia is one of them. I already forgot the other name. I don't know. Devin or something like that. So they're two different families. They both have two-year-olds with leukemia. If we could pray for them, that uh, their treatments will go well, and they'll be completely healed. Definitely. Definitely want to pray for them. Anyone else? There's a phrase. Um, I was listening to one for Israel. This week, and a lot of the Christians who are in the army are having <coughs> many, many of the soldiers talk to them about faith. Good. Yes. That's great. Yeah, so we yeah, definitely want to be praying for, for Christians on the Israel side as well, so they would be good witnesses. And, and I, I, have, I have another praise. I had the opportunity to go to a friend's baptism uh, last Sunday night and over at Calvary Chapel. And while I was there, there were at least 20 people who got baptized. So, praise, praise the, the Lord for that. <coughs> quite a few of them, I believe, were, from the earlier talking, only quite a few of them were new believers, relatively new, and some of them have been saved for a while, but were just getting to come to that. That's real praise. 20 people got baptized. So, praise the Lord for that. Anyone else? Yes. It was a joy yesterday. We were yes. small in numbers, but we got the church decorated. We had a wonderful luncheon for the first time. It was all casseroles. What do you know about that? But and the, the only non-casserole was mine, which wasn't done yet. So. <laughs> well, you better <laughs> Yeah. So we had a wonderful time, and I thank you, everybody, that participated. And we had a little bit of fun in the gift swap as well. So yes. thank you, everybody, that came. Yeah, and thank you, everyone, who came it was a fun time, and we got everything set up pretty quickly, so. Anyone else? Don't forget to pick up your updated prayer list yes. out in the entryway. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> yeah.
Um, if, if anybody did, did, didn't hear him, uh, updated prayer list in the interior. Make sure you pick it up uh, on the, before you leave. Thank you. You want to Chris? Pray for all drivers on the road. Peter found one of the keys I had to his truck. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully he won't be out there. Well, if you aren't supposed to drive, hopefully you won't be. So. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord in heaven, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to 
privilege for us to be able to come before you with praises and prayer requests and to know that you do hear us. Lord, I pray that you please be with Edna who tested positive for COVID. Lord, I pray that it not be severe, that it be hopefully a, a case with no issues at all. Lord, either way, I pray that you please be with her and help her through this. Lord, I pray that, that you that COVID goes through the nursing home quickly and, and ends uh, so that the, the nursing home can open back up and so people can go in and visit. Lord, I pray that you please be with the family of the two of the two year olds who have leukemia. Lord, I pray that you please be with the two year olds and the doctors and with the families. I pray that you please give comfort and peace and wisdom. Lord, I pray that your will be done. Lord, I pray that they be cured. Lord, please I pray continue to be with Barbara as she she recovers and fights this. And Lord, please I pray be with Peter and help him to recover. Lord, I thank you for for the opportunities that the Christians in Israel have had to be witnesses for you, for those around them. Lord, I pray that you help them, give them strength, and help them to be witnesses to those around them, so that others may come to know you, more may come to know you. Lord, I pray that you please be with Travis Pelletier and Rachel Christie. Lord, please, I pray, be with that ministry as well. Please open the hearts and minds of the students there so that they may come to know you. They may hear, hear about you and your work. Lord, I thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, I pray that you please be with those who are away. Lord, I thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before we get into the birth of Jesus and the parables, we must look at the genealogy in chapter 1. And ultimately the question that this, that this passage, verses 1 to 17, answers. Who is Jesus? There are two genealogies concerning Jesus. One in Luke and the other here in Matthew. The one in Luke is the genealogy of Jesus' mother, Mary. Whereas this one deals with Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, which affects Jesus' claim as the Son of God. This genealogy is necessary because the Messiah, Christ, was promised to be a part of Abraham's and David's line. Let's, let's go ahead and look at the passage. <coughs> Please stand while we read God's word. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of jo Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the deportation of Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abiah, and Abiah the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor, 
and Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eliezer, and Eliezer the father of, of Matha, and Matan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David were fourteen generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, fourteen generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, fourteen generations. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord in Heaven, Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you, Lord, for giving us your word. Lord, I pray that you please teach us. Lord, please, I pray, help us to apply what we learn from your word to our lives. Thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So in this passage, we will look at Jesus, the son of Abraham, Jesus, the son of David, and Jesus, the king. In this passage, we see that God wants you to know that Jesus Christ is the son of David, the promised Messiah. Now, with it being Christmas, with it being Advent, I came across a couple of poems that I thought would help to give us a perspective on who Jesus is. The first poem is called Maker of the Numbers. His holy fingers formed the bow, the bow, where grew the thorns that crowned his brow. The nails that pierced the hands were mine, in secret places he designed. He made the forests whence they sprung, the tree on which his body hung. He died upon a cross of wood, yet made the hill upon which it stood. The sun which hid from his from him its face, by his decree was poised in space. The sky which darkened o'er his head, by him above the earth was spread. The spear that spilled his precious blood was tempered in the fires of God. The grave in which his form was laid was hewn in rocks his hands had made. And the second one is called Face to Face. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Only faintly now I see him, with the darkling veil between. But a blessed day is coming, when his glory shall be seen. Face to face, O blissful moment, face to face to see and know. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. That is Jesus. He is the Creator. So those thorns that, that were put on, on his head, the wood that, that, that he was nailed to, and the tomb that he was in, those were originally from him, because he created everything. Now the thorns were a result of sin. God did not originally make those. But he took our sin for us. And the thorns were, were, were a result of our sin. But I thought that those, those poems were, were fitting since we're talking about who God is. So first we're going to be looking at Jesus, the son of Abraham. And in Genesis 22. Twenty-two, sixteen, and eighteen. It says, uh, and starting verse fifteen. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Now, many of you may, may know that the context of this passage is God testing Abraham to kill Isaac, to sacrifice Isaac for God. Because this was, to, this was for Abraham to show to God that he trusted God, that he loved God. And later we see in, in Hebrews, that Abraham did this, understanding that God would not break his promise. So he believed that, that when he killed Isaac, God would raise him from the dead. Because he knew God would keep his promise. There is great imagery here concerning Jesus. Abraham offered his only son to God. 
And God offered His only Son as a sacrifice to save us. Which is still astounding. That God would sacrifice His Son for us. We're not worthy of it. God is worthy of any sacrifice. But we're not. We don't deserve it. But God still gave it. Because Abraham obeyed God, obeyed, God gave him a promise that through Abraham's offspring all the nations of the world will be blessed. Israel didn't do that. David didn't do that. Solomon didn't do that. But Jesus did. He has sacrificed himself to become the greatest gift ever given and has offered us the blessing and opportunity to have our sins forgiven and to be adopted into God's family as sons and daughters. I'd say that's a pretty good blessing right there. To be saved by God and adopted into His family. Jesus is the fulfillment of that promise. That's why He is called the son of Abraham. Because He was in Abraham's line. He was the, the promised seed of Abraham. And he fulfilled that promise. How great of a gift that is. I mean, that's that's what we that's what we spend this time of Advent and Christmas remembering Jesus coming to earth. He was born and he lived a perfect life so that he could be the perfect sacrifice. This is something that we should never take lightly. And we we may say, well, I would never do that. Well, that a lot more than I think any of us would ever want to attend. Because we get easily distracted. We easily focus on, on things that, that aren't as important. And I think it's easy for us to become so focused on ourselves, on what we're going through, that we forget about God. We forget about Jesus. Or we think, God, how can I thank you when I'm going through this right now? How can I thank you when I'm going through this suffering, when you're letting me go through this? How can I be thankful for, for that? Well, because if he didn't do that, then you'd be going through this alone. But you're not alone. Jesus went through far more than any suffering he could go through. He was literally separated from himself. Because Jesus is God. And God turned his back on the earth. And never once had God been separated from himself like that. But Jesus went through it for us. I think that was probably the most painful part of the crucifixion. Not, not being nailed on the cross, which would have been agony, but him being separated from himself. Him having sin put on him, when, on him who knew no sin, on him who was perfect. I can't imagine the agony that he went through for you and me. But he was the promise, the, the blessing to the earth that was promised through Abraham. And God fulfilled and kept his promise. So we see that Jesus is the son of Abraham, but we also know that Jesus is the son of David, as we see in verse 1. The book of the genealogies of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And in 2 Samuel 7, Starting in verse 12, it says, When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This passage is showing God's covenant to David, or what is commonly called the Davidic covenant. In this passage, God tells David his plan for Israel and for his throne, for his line. The specific verse that deals with David's offspring is a double prophecy. It's talking about Solomon and Jesus. 
Because you, you see in that passage, or you've heard in that passage where it talks about when he sinned. Well, clearly Jesus never sinned. Solomon did. Solomon would, would build a temple for God. And God would, would be to him as a father. And God did dis, dis bless Solomon with wisdom. He, he was there with Solomon, but Solomon had great wisdom, but he didn't follow it. Obviously, we know Jesus, we know God is the Father of Jesus. Jesus is God the Son. And he was with, with, with him. Because obviously Solomon could not make the kingdom, the throne of David to last forever. That, that wouldn't really work. Because Solomon has died. Jesus died, but he came back. And he will establish a royal throne forever. And through him, David's house and, and dominion will endure forever. Jesus will forever be referred to as the son of David. God did this because of David's faithfulness and service. Even though David made many, many mistakes, some of which the law called for his death because he committed adultery, God forgave him. And because David was so quick to write his relationship with with God after he sinned, after he made mistakes. God called him a man after his own heart and blessed him so that the Messiah would be referred to as the Son of David. Now obviously that is not as great of a title as the Son of God. But it's still a very important title. And God blessed David for his faithfulness. And that's why we see Jesus as the Son of David. This genealogy here in Matthew, it showed Jesus' legal right to the throne of David through his adoptive, adoptive father, Joseph. And his, and his blood right to the throne was through his mother. Now, it's, it's important to understand in the, in the genealogy that Jeconiah, he was cursed by God for his sins and was told that no king would come from his line in Jeremiah 22.30. So Jesus had to have the legal connection to this line of David, which was through Solomon's line. But he needed the blood connection to another son of David in order to be the biological heir as well. And he is through David's son Nathan, which we see in the Luke genealogy. So he needed to have that legal connection through the Solomon line. But Jeconiah rebelled against God to the point that God told Jeconiah that no more kings will come through your line. Now, legally speaking, there did, but not blood. That came through David's son, Nathan, through Mary. So God fulfilled that prophecy in a way that we wouldn't expect. Maybe, maybe so, some people, when they come across that in Jeremiah, will think, oh, well, God couldn't have kept his promise. That means there's, there's a contradiction in Scripture. No, it just means God did something God allowed something to happen to where he was able to more prove who he was. Because it would have been easier if Jeconiah was still able, to, if it just followed straight through Jeconiah un, undeterred, unopposed. But God said, no, it will not come through Jeconiah, but the legal requirement is still there to come through that line, just not the blood requirement. But God still worked that out. The legal requirement came through Joseph who was not blood related to Jesus. But Jesus was adopted. So you have a legal connection. That's the blood issue. But then you still have the, the blood you married to another son, David. So God worked that out. So that it would be right as he as he tested it. <laughs> that's the God there. But God worked that out. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant. He is the promised son of David, Messiah. So we see Jesus, the son of Abraham, Jesus, the son of David. Now let's look at Jesus, the king. Jesus is the son of God, the promised king and savior. But there, there are so many more aspects to him than just that. Just that. <laughs> There's no just about being the, the promised son of God and Messiah. 
But we also know that Jesus is the suffering servant and Savior. Isaiah talks a lot about this. One, one pastor I know referred to Isaiah as the fifth gospel because of how much it talks about Jesus. In Isaiah 52, verses 13 to 15, it says, Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which he has been told, told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. And then verse 53, sorry, chapter 53 is all about this, all about Jesus as the suffering servant. Jesus was the servant sent by God to be marred, as it says in 52.14, beaten, as it says in 53.5, but he was pierced for our transgression, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. And killed, as we see in 53.8-9, by oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. He went through all of that so that our sins, our transgressions against God, could be forgiven. So that we could be spiritually healed. from our own sins. Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth and willingly went through all of us. It really is amazing to understand or even to, to read what Jesus went through. And Jesus knew he was going to go through. He knew the word. He was the word. He knew it. He knew what he was going to go through even before he came to earth. And he still came because he so loves us. So we have this time of Advent. We have hope. Hope is the first candle. We have hope because Jesus has promised that he will come back. And that we will get to be in heaven in the new earth and in the new earth with him. We have that hope. Those, those who are not saved, they don't have hope. Their, their best hope is that when they die, it's nothing. They just cease to exist. You have others who believe in false religions, or people who believe that they can lose their salvation. That at any moment, they, they, they can do something and lose their salvation, and they have to get saved again before their time comes. They're living in constant fear. Certainly no way that God wants us to live. Because he, he gave us his, his word for the purpose of telling us how we can be saved and letting us know that we, so that we can know we are saved. Like it says in 1 John 5, 13, the word was written so that you may know that you're saved. That's a paraphrase. But that's what it says. God wants us to know. Jesus went through this for a purpose. Jesus, the Son of God, and servant of God will be exalted to King by God the Father for his suffering and service to God and in saving us the lost. Jesus came to seek and to save those which are lost. Us. He came to save me and each of you. I'm certainly not, not worthy of being saved. I'm certainly not worthy of that sacrifice. But Jesus did it anyways. Because he loves us. We had communion to help to help be a remembrance of what Jesus did for us. But we need to be aware of, of, of that fact. We need to purpose in our hearts to not take that for granted. If, if there is anything for us to ever thank God for every day, it is our salvation. Because we never could have saved ourselves. 
We never could have done anything to get ourselves out of hell. We never could have done anything to change our life. But Jesus did that for us. So we need to thank Him. And do and keep doing so. Don't, don't let it become a it's just a, a habitual prayer that doesn't mean anything. Like it, I, I found that it's easy when when I thank God for, for the food I have, it's easy just to say and keep going. But we need to be intentional. Because Jesus was intentional in what he did for us. In Matthew, Jesus' kingship is the emphasis. And that's why this genealogy is so important. It shows Jesus' legal right to the throne of David. It shows that he is the one promised to bring salvation to Israel and be a blessing to the world by opening salvation and a relationship with God to the Gentiles. To us. Unless anyone, else, anyone here here is Jewish. But he opens salvation to everyone. As we come upon Christmas and the birth of Jesus, who was God's coming, I thought this story would be appropriate. It's called, uh, it's a story that Swindoll had. It says, one raw winter night, a man heard in, in a regular thumping sound against the kitchen storm door. He went to a window and watched as tiny, shivering sparrows, attracted to the evident warmth inside, beat in vain against the glass. Touched, the farmer bundled them up and trudged through fresh snow to open the barn for the struggling birds. He turned on the lights, tossed some hay in the corner, and sprinkled the trail of saltine crackers to, do, to direct them to the barn. But the sparrows, which had scattered in all directions when he emerged from the house, still hid in the darkness, afraid of him. He tried various tactics, circling behind the birds to drive them toward the barn, tossing cracker crumbs in the air toward them, retreating to his house to see if they'd flutter into the barn on their own. Nothing worked. He, a huge alien creature, had terrified them. The birds could not understand that he actually desired to help. He withdrew to his house and watched the doomed sparrows through a window. As he stared, a thought hit him like lightning from a clear blue sky. If only I could become a bird, one of them just for a moment, then I wouldn't frighten them so. I could show them the way to warmth and safety. At the same moment, another thought dawned on him. He had grasped the whole principle of the Incarnation. A man becoming a bird is nothing compared to God becoming a man. The concept of a sovereign being as big as the universe he created, confining himself to the human body, was and is too much for some people to believe. Just like with, with the farmer desiring to help the sparrow, God desired to help us. And so, made himself lower than the angels. Put himself in human form. Lived through the sinful world. And went through all of it so he could save us. Matthew focuses on Jesus' kingship. He is king. He will be the king. He is king now, because he is God. But Matthew focuses on that aspect of Jesus as king of the Jews, because of the prophecy of that. So as we look through Matthew, we'll be seeing different aspects of Jesus that emphasize his kingship, his authority as such. And so we need to, to remember who Jesus is. And I think the best verse in this passage to memorize, to, to know, is Matthew 1.1. 1, 1, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. I think that verse best summarizes who Jesus is in this book. Maybe one of the best verses about who Jesus is. Jesus, the son of David, the son of Abraham. In this passage, we see who Jesus is. The promised offspring of Abraham. The promised son of David. And the promised Messiah and King. 
In this passage, we see that God wants you to know who Jesus is so that we can come to know salvation through Him, enjoy and worship Him, and serve Him. <clears throat> because He is our Lord and Savior, shouldn't we be praising His, His name and thanking Him daily? Do you praise and thank Jesus every day for your salvation? <clears throat> How are you serving your Savior and King? And more importantly, do you know Jesus? the Savior of mankind? Do you know Him personally? Have you asked Him to save you from your sins, asking for forgiveness of your sins? Are you trusting in Him for salvation? Or are you trusting in Him in something else? Because we are to trust only in Him. It's only through Him that we have salvation. So, one, one more time before we before we end, I would like to review the outline and the application that God wants us to take away. In this passage, we see Jesus, the son of Abraham, Jesus, the son of David, and Jesus, the king. In this passage, God wants you to know that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah and King, the Son of David. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord in Heaven, Lord, I thank You for this beautiful day. I thank You, Lord, for giving us Your Word. Lord, I pray that You help us to spend time in it each day, to spend time in prayer, to utilize that great privilege and gift that You've given us. Lord, please, I pray, help us as we go through this book. Lord, please teach us more about Jesus. Show us how we can more become like Him, how we can better serve You. Lord, please help us to, to leave here different each time we come, closer to You. Lord, I thank You for all Your many blessings. Lord, I thank You for the greatest gift of all. As we come to, to a time of, of, gift, of gift giving, You've already given us the greatest gift, the gift of, of, free, of Your forgiveness and eternal life. Lord, please, I pray, help none of us here to take for granted that gift, but to remember it daily and to thank you for it. And I thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's turn our hand motions. Close to number 248. I extol you and let's stand and sing together.
and hopefully the, the fill in the blank outline is hopefully helpful to, to you guys. And if it's not, let me know. You can always change back to what it was. So I'd, I'd be glad to hear your, your guys' thoughts on it. Because uh, the purpose of that is to help you guys. So if it's confusing, then it's not very helpful. So I'd be, I'd be happy to hear feedback about that. And again, if, if there's any questions that you have about about the sermon or about anything like that, feel free to come and ask me or call or send me an email, anything like that. Uh, I, I hope you all have a great week. And hopefully you all stay warm and safe tomorrow, or tonight into tomorrow. So some 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 say it could be an inch, others say it could be a foot. Um, you never know. Hopefully it's an inch. That would be my preference. But, you know, I think most of us would. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord in Heaven, Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Lord, I thank you for giving us the health to be here, the means of transportation to be here, the weather to be here. Lord, I pray that you help us to be witnesses for you to those around us. Lord, I pray that you help us be examples of, of your love. Lord, please help us to be, as Herb says, to be the Bible that people can read, since we, we may be the only Bible that people do read. Lord, please ever help us to be accurate representations of you as we are to be your ambassadors. Lord, please help us to live in such a way that people can, can look at us and quickly realize hey, that that person is a Christian. Not, not because we go to church or not because of how we dress, but because of how we live, how we treat others. And Lord, I pray that you please be with everyone here as, as we go from here today. And I pray that you please bless them and help them through whatever difficulties they're going through. Give them wisdom and patience and encouragement. Remind them that they are not alone and that they are loved. Lord, I pray that you please be with them and keep them safe, keep them warm. Lord, I pray that you help each and every one of us to love each other more so that we may encourage one another and provoke one another into good works. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.